Hey everyone, this is Daily Dose of Medicine. In this video, we will talk about diabetes insipidus briefly. It's a rare endocrine disorder characterized by the inability of the body to maintain water balance. Unlike diabetes mellitus, which involves insulin and glucose regulation, this condition specifically pertains to the dysfunction of ADH, also known as vasopressin hormone. And the types and causes briefly, we have central diabetes insipidus, and it's caused by deficient production or secretion of this hormone, ADH. And it can be caused by trauma, tumors, infections, inflammation, or vascular lesions affecting the hypothalamus or pituitary gland can lead to this condition. And the second type is nephrogenic diabetes insipidus, which is caused by failing to respond to the circulating ADH by the kidney. And it can be caused by genetic mutations, renal disorders, electrolyte imbalances, and certain medications like lithium, demoglycycline. In normal physiology, ADH regulates water reabsorption in the kidneys, concentrating urine and conserving the water. In this condition, the absence or inadequate response to ADH, depending on the cause, absence, central, inadequate response seen on nephrogenic, leads to an inability to concentrate urine, resulting in excessive dilute urine production. And let's talk about clinical presentation now. We have polyuria, which is excessive urine output, exceeding 3 liters per day. Polydipsia, which is intense thirst due to fluid loss through excessive urination. Dehydration without compensatory fluid intake. Dehydration may occur, leading to symptoms such as dry mucous membranes, sunken eyes, and hypotension. To diagnose it, we can use water deprivation test, which measures the body's response to dehydration and helps differentiate between central and nephrogenic diabetes insipidus. ADH blood tests, which can assess ADH levels in the blood during dehydration and rehydration phases. MRI and CT can be used and to identify structural abnormalities. For treatment, we can use desmopressin, synthetic analog of ADH, which is used to replace or supplement deficient hormone levels in central diabetes insipidus. Fluid management patients are often advised to maintain fluid intake con to compensate for excessive urine output. Uh, addressing the root cause in cases of secondary diabetes insipidus, such as removing tumors or managing renal disorders, could be treatment for us. With appropriate treatment, individuals with diabetes insipidus can lead normal lives. Lifelong management may be required. Regular monitoring of fluid balance, urine output, and electrolyte levels is crucial in this condition. Adjustments to medication dosage may be necessary based on clinical response. It's essential to consider individual patient characteristics medical history and response to treatment in managing diabetes insipidus and if you think that you have symptoms of diabetes insipidus or your relative have the symptoms please consider seeing healthcare provider and don't forget to watch our high blood sugar symptoms and metformin side effects videos see you on the next one